cost concepts and cost allocation in managerial accounting. We've been talking about overhead and the four steps to success, which was number one, to plan what your overhead rate is going to be for the period. Number two, apply that overhead rate during the period. Also, during the period, step three was to recognize the actual cost of overhead. And finally, at the end of the period, to reconcile your overhead account and find if you've over-applied or under-applied overhead, in other words, how good a guesser are you, and take that difference into cost of goods sold. And the reason why was because cost of goods sold has to tell the actual cost. And we've been working under what we call normal costing, haven't we? Well, now we get we dig a little deeper. Yes, it does get deeper here. Uh, and we go back and we say, you know, that overhead rate that we get in step one, the predetermined or the estimated or budgeted overhead at the beginning of the period, and we divide that by a cost driver to get the overhead rate. Well, there's two ways we can go about it. We can go about it by the traditional method, and the traditional method says we have one overhead rate and only one for the whole business. So we only have to get this rate, and it's called the plant-wide rate. Plant-wide because, hey, for the whole plant, for the whole business, one overhead rate. And it's very easy to do this, but there's a problem. As a manager, if you were managing a production process, whether it was for a service or whether it was for a product, and you have one overhead rate, you're going to have a lot of costs that are going into that overhead account. Remember the overhead account? And everything that goes into the overhead account kind of goes into a black hole. Because as a manager, you don't really, you can't really get in there and control these costs because there's so many of them going in. Especially if you're in a, a business that's highly automated. And the reason that is is because depreciation and electricity would be big costs of an automated production uh, process, wouldn't they? So if there's a lot going into overhead, in other words, that's not materials and not direct labor, I can't do a very good job controlling the cost. So what arose is what we call ABC, activity-based costing. And activity-based costing says, let's take this big overhead account and let's chunk it a bit. Let's put it into smaller tasks or pools of activity. So sometimes you'll hear it be called ABC called cost pools or cost task, tasks or cost activities. But we're going to take this one overhead account and we're going to divide it out and we're going to have separate accounts, one for each activity. So in total, will all the costs be related to the indirect cost of my production process? Yes. But now we'll have one for like setup, one for um, tool engage, one for inspection. And by segregating down my actual versus how much I apply for each of these activities as a manager, can I do a better job? and manage more precisely. I, in other words, I have precision in my criticism. So that's activity-based costing. Well, what does that mean? That means you're going to be finding an overhead rate, just like this, for each and every activity. And you will be applying an overhead rate based upon the actual cost drivers that drive each of these activities. In other words, I can have a different cost driver for each one. So I'm just not stuck with direct labor hours or direct labor costs or machine hours. I can use a different statistic that is more precise in the measuring the causality of those costs. At the end of the period, do I still have to reconcile my over and under applied overhead? Yes, but I'll be doing that for each and every activity. So 
So that's the difference between the traditional approach and activity-based costing approach.